Ronnie Dahl, fourwheelingwestonaustralia.com and in this video I'm going to answer some questions. How do you camp? We well, you know the camp setups video I was talking about earlier. This will be one of them and you'll see more than just one of my own camp because I camp very differently depending on what we're doing. So I'm here with my daughter Sienna, my eldest daughter. We have just finished a tag along tour which uh, we were conducting. The rest of the boys have taken the rest of the crew back to Hyden. I'm in the gold fields in Western Australia and we're at a secret location on a salt lake. So we just drove around, just hugged around on the entrance. So we are essentially on the beach bit, the bit that's hard. You never want to drive out on a salt lake. Uh, you will get caught out one day. And what I mean by that is you get stuck. So this is our camp. Say hi Sienna. Hello. And we shall go through and show you exactly the new gear I'm playing with and how we camp. So what you will see in this video is gear we use, how we camp, tips and advice. Stay tuned. So let's start with accommodation, where we sleep. I now have a new swag to test out. Double ARB Skydome swag. So far so good. How many nights have we been in it now? This one? Four? Yeah, four. Tonight's number five. So the fifth night in it. That's what we're um, camping in. It fits, well, you can fit two adults in there, I guess. It would, would be a bit tight for two adults, but um, a small child and myself, perfect. Um, and I'm going to be using this as solo traveling as well. The mat down here, mats that we camp on. This is a sea gear mat. I um, sourced one of these on eBay. Well, I've actually got two now. I like it that much. So I bought a second one, really cool. What we are using here is a Snow Peak fire pit. Now, what I like about fire pits is you don't leave a mark on the ground. Now in the morning, that will be stone cold. That's what I like about these fire pits. The problem with ground fires, it still retains a lot of heat in the ground and you have to put them out. And uh, it can take a lot of water to put it out properly and it's never out properly. You don't leave a mark and no one even knows you were there. So what have we got here, Sienna? Uh, um, I'm just training with my knife with these sticks. It's pretty actually fun. I started with a very mini one and now I'm starting with my next level. Then I've got, I think, this again and then this. That one's the really hard one. Okay, just uh, careful with the flicking. Yeah. So don't flick it. Yep. I have, in fact, sat down and what do we have about an hour's worth of lesson? How to use a knife? <laughs> so we have talked about it. Oh, do you want to do you want to share a tip for other kids who are uh, if you want to learn how to use a knife. Oh, um, always keep the knife away from your body. So make sure you're going that way, not this way, because you can sometimes get it right into your chest or your st in or your body. Or your arms. Yeah. And never cut towards someone else, right? Yeah, because you can hurt them too. And I think they have to go to hospital. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, just take care of that one, okay? Mm-hmm. Alright, to save myself from a barrage of questions, the knife that Sienna was using is an open L knife. I bought it on eBay for about 30 40 bucks. I can't quite remember. The main walkthrough of the camp will happen after this. How do you like the moonrise? That is epic. How cool is that? It's the next morning, so good morning to you all. 
a lot of flies around. So that brings me on to a couple other things. Let's this morning show you all the stuff that we actually use. Uh, what kind of bug spray, cooking utensils, all that kind of stuff, because that's the stuff that you guys want to see. So what I use now is pretty well my setup for Firebase cooking. So let's go and have a look at that. So really quick, because our fire's ready for breakfast, we're going to do bacon eggs in the wok. We're gonna do scramble eggs. This is one of the most versatile bits of um, camping gear you can get. Just make sure you've got a wooden handle or a steel handle, no plastic on it. I have ripped or burnt the old handle off a while ago. And this is a $10 wok, maybe a $20 wok. I'm not sure, I took it from the kitchen. This is one of those extendable mesh uh, holders, mesh baskets, I guess they're called. Uh, this is good for steaks. Not something I've used too much, but I've been starting to use a bit of lately. It's so lightweight, so I can take it with me. This is actually really good to do bacon in as well. Uh, chicken, strips of chicken, really fast. Steaks you can do, but uh, I prefer to put steaks straight on the coals. That They taste lovely. This is a camp oven, and this particular one is a snow peak, and the reason why I love it is because we have a pan inside and a camp oven, so we can do multiple things with it. The size of it, probably good for four people max, depending on what you're cooking. Um, also recommend two camp ovens. So have a travel companion with another camp oven. You can do meat in one, veggies in the other. Also recommend getting a bag for your camp oven. Any bag will do, uh, but probably try and go canvas so it doesn't melt it. Now all the items I have here, I'll, I will list them in, in the description below, the ones that I use and um, you can make your own list out of that. These are stainless steel tables, perfect for campfire cooking. I do have a coffee percolator, I would use that on the fire. I can heat water for noodles or I can heat water for coffee, percolate coffee in it. Do I use gas? No, I have, well look, I do have a little compact gas stove cooker that I use for noodles, quick road stops, stuff like that. What I have over here is a fire pit. I think I covered that last night. And um, great for this style of cooking because I have a contained fire and the wok sits in there perfectly. I've removed the top mesh, which I could put on to cook steaks on, which we did last night, actually. We cooked steaks on that last night. So lastly, one of the other things I use for cooking is heat beads, but not heat beads, wood charcoal. This is some of the best stuff you can cook with and the flavors that come off this are awesome. Great flavors, great smoky flavors. Now I used to carry a, um, a starter around, you know those baskets to hold it, and I stopped carrying one until I found this thing, which is a collapsible one. So you put your heat beads in here, heat them up, and then it collapses down to nothing. Really cool. So that actually comes with me um, because it's a lot easier to light your heat, uh, heat beads or your wood charcoal with one of those. Now, you don't have to have one to be able to do it. You, you can do it on the ground, but it's much easier with that and it's much cleaner. So, yeah, that's the Uni Flame one, that particular one there. I used to have the Bunnings one, $30 one. It's too bulky, so I stopped bringing it. So, this here is my main cooking bag. And this is what I roll in here. Gas canister with gas lighter. Very handy for a lot of things. <clears throat> so I'll put the bag down here and I'll put, empty the contents. Tongs, spatula. Now, bear in mind, I'm, this is all for cast iron stuff, so I use metal on metal. Paper towel. Scarawa, steel wool, the best thing to clean your stuff with. Uh, this is from Grab Me Gear, these little pouches, and these are, I believe these are hillbilly little egg couplets. These are, pre these are pretty good when you use them with the hillbilly pan. I didn't bring that on this trip. Uh, barbecue wipes, two lots of. 
skewers, scraper, tent peg. Now this goes in the camp oven to crack the lid. Um, good for getting moisture out of it. For example, if you're doing uh, roast pork, this will help you crackle the top by letting some of that air escape. Ladle, uh, a spoon. I don't really use this to be honest. And a fork. This is for getting your pork roast out sometimes. And I also have another gas sort of torch. This one here is a bit more concentrate. Couple of egg rings, which I've never used. So there's some stuff there I can get rid of actually. Um, just a hint, yeah, so go through your stuff and add stuff that you need that you might have seen here or take stuff out you don't use. So when I get home, I'm gonna remove those egg rings because I have these, these I actually use. Um, I'm going to remove this plastic spoon because I have a ladle. I don't even know how that spoon ended up in there. Something new I want to talk to you about is this. This is a stable table. My daughter likes the Fremantle Dockers. How do you like this table? Good. It was good, yeah? This oil thing here is a cheap decor um, oil spray thing. Now this idea I got from uh, Jimmy from Grab Me Gear. Really cool idea. They're very cheap. They do fail, however. This is the second one I'm onto now. But for the price you pay, you know, you would have already gone through a couple of cans of the aerosol spray can. These, you don't need aerosol, and some people are worried about the aerosol whole spray thing with the can. So there you go, no need to worry, you can top it up anytime you want. This plate here is covering a lot of hoses and two pumps. One pump draws from the tank, and on the other side, which we'll get to in a sec, is where the water comes out. The other pump draws from a bucket. So I heated a bucket this morning on the fire and that bucket is still quite warm. It nearly got to boiling point. I've put it aside, there's a lot of water. Right now it's probably a really good temperature. Now I generally have cold showers but sometimes you need hot water to get the dirt off you. I've got a lot of mud and stuff on me from the tag along tour. <laughs> So the whole purpose of this system is if I want to shower, I want to pull it through uh, the hoses, but I don't want to contaminate my 40 litres of water. So that's why I have two pumps. So if you look over here, we have a switch. I can switch between bucket and tank. Tank obviously draws from the tank. Bucket draws from this hose here. And that... I can put into a jerry can. This is the water tap. That's for drinking water. This is for shower. But how do I have a shower like that? Oh, going on like that. Then we have a shower. Now that's drawing from my tank. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to show you my shower tent. Ladies and gents, it's part of that quick pitch shower setup. And I've seen this on uh, someone else's vehicle. And um, since I've seen it, it's been something I've been thinking about for a long time. And I finally got it. So there we go, the shower tent. So here we are inside the shower. This is my toiletries bag. There's Sienna, help me with some filming. And uh, here I can reach my towel and my bag. Now I do need to adjust the pitch of the shower a bit because if I have the window all the way down, I do get a little bit of water inside. And I don't, I don't want water inside the car. So for now, window's here, I can reach my towel. Hello. And I can reach my clothes. 
All right, turn over shower. I switch to the bucket, shower on. Now the idea of a shower and the bush, you don't have much water, is you just wet yourself. And then wash cream. This is the one I use, uh, Cedar Summit one. Uh, I think it's about 20 bucks. They're quite expensive, but it lasts quite a while. I had this for over a year. That's how much I've used. Maybe I haven't had enough showers. So it's concentrate. So you just get a bit out and pull over your naked booboo. Yeah, naked booboo. <laughs> naked booboo. That was my idea. Naked yeah, that was your idea. Yeah. So that's pretty much my shower setup. The only problem is when you wash yourself in the bush and there are a lot of flies around, you kind of attract more of them because of the smell of the deodorant and stuff like that. So another issue that I've, I've uh, dealt with for a while, and I've only just started doing something about it, is where to put my dirty clothes. Now out here in the outback there are no laundry mats, so even long distance travel I can't just stop somewhere and, and you know wash my clothes. So I'm going to show you my solution to the problem. Dirty clothes in. Starting to really fill up. Oh yeah, and then we twist. Try and get all the air out. Twist and close. Dirty clothes are in the bag. Now these are meant for crossing rivers with, with your clothes and stuff like that. So uh, no smell will escape this and no moisture will enter or escape. So your clothes won't go moldy. And that can then go on the roof because it's lightweight. My final thing to share with you in regards to hygiene is the toilet seat. Let's put that in my pocket and blow away. This is not something I normally bring. However, if I travel with my daughter or my family, this is what I'll bring. And it's just a simple seat. Some people don't like to squat. Uh, so I guess for older people too, place the toilet seat and do your business. Obviously you dig a hole underneath first. The only trouble with this is you can't dig a wide hole. So in loose sand, it's a bit difficult to use. Uh, in that situation, I would do the business on the ground, dig a hole next to it, shovel it in, bury it. In this case, it's quite firm here. We could dig a hole, sit there, cover it up afterwards. Clean our toilet seat with some uh, fresh wipes and uh, take it back to camp. Now one other thing I want to mention though, any, any lady person that goes off into the bush, uh, does a number one and you use those wet wipes, take them back with you, throw them in your rubbish bag or in the fire. Don't leave them out in the bush, that is a big problem that I'll see. If you have young kids, daughters, even sons, Teach them if they're using wet wipes, take them back and put them in a rubbish bin. Now obviously if, you, if it's the other one where we're doing, burn the paper in the hole, then bury it. All right, so I'm starting to pack up and that's prompted me to talk about storage now, where I tend to store things. Now there's some ideas here that you guys could get as well. So, all my temp pegs and stuff go in one bag with the hammer, so that's all in here, um, and that's what it looks like here. I've got a uh, hoochie cord, which is sort of strong cord, uh, cord for my awning, yes I do have an awning now, copperhead hammer, copperhead, every time you hit it you'll strike true, it doesn't bounce off, which is actually pretty cool, and good strong pegs, so these you can really drive into the ground, and it's got an eyelid here. So what you do is you stick the, the hook of the hammer in and you can twist it around and then pull it out. Um, so I store a lot of my stuff in little bags, like all my cooking stuff here, the camp oven, 
Um, you end up with a lot of bags, but bags really help. This is the, I keep forgetting what it's called, Camp Cover Ammo Cover 3 Up. Camp Cover Ammo Cover 3 Up. This has now got a permanent home on the back of my ute, and uh, I'm no longer going to do any drawers here. This is how I store all my stuff in here. So over here, we got bug spray, uh, my special bottles. This is food storage. So basically I keep flour, milk, just, you know, just your general stuff. In here is all my tools. And this is a fire gathering bag. So for small bits of firewood, comes in handy. Water storage, 40 liters of drinking water. This is only drinking water, will not be used for anything else. Then I have two jerrys with 10 liters in it. They are just for showers and for cleaning stuff. I have two bags on the back here. This one here in particular has fire starter stuff. Uh, bits of wood, stuff I can start a fire with from flint. And if I really don't want to wait, I have fire lighters here. Now these are mainly used for the heat beads that I showed you earlier. This one here is just straps and um, a couple of spare pegs, stuff like that. Last but not least is the tent. Now I'm pretty sure we touched on it a little bit last night, but um, what we're using inside it is something we didn't touch on. So sleeping bag was just got one of those cheap Wanderer sleeping bags for Sienna. Um, it's quite bulky. I'm not really a fan of it, um, only because I'm used to this lightweight stuff that rolls up real easy. So this is a uh, Delani. I think it's Delani. Um, look, these are expensive, and uh, this is a discontinued one, so I managed to get this for $90, down from $300 and something dollars. So $300 is a lot to spend on a uh, sleeping bag. However, having used this now, um, I'll probably spend about 200 bucks on a sleeping bag, because it's something I'm gonna use for a long time. But having used this now, I'll probably I probably would have considered it for sure because this is the easiest sleeping bag I've ever had to pack up. Um, so easy that I in fact pack this up every time I roll the swag up, even though it could fit in the swag. Pillows, we use our home pillows. Sleep is important and it took me a long time to sort of just, you know, just bring my home pillow. I used to use my bags, my jackets, my clothing. Um, I used to think people that use their proper pillows were soft, but in actual fact, they'll see why they use them. You get a, you get a decent night's sleep. Sleep is important when you're camping. You don't want to wake up with a you know, stiff or sore neck and feeling a bit tired. So we use our home pillows. And uh, this mattress in here, look, I've only had this uh, swag for a couple of days, uh, or a week, I would say camped in it for a week now. Um, I have to say that early on, this is the most comfortable mattress I've ever had. Now, it doesn't pack down very small. That's the only thing. However, it, um, it's kind of offset by the, the comfortness of it. I'll see how it goes because I like to sleep with the fly net open. So when it rains, I don't think you can actually... Oh, you, I think you can actually. There's some... Probably get two poles to hold this out like this. Because even when it rains, I like to have the, I like to have my tents and swags open. So we'll see how it goes over time. Head torches. This is what we use: cheap $16 eBay head torches, headlamps, LED headlamp. I'll put a link to it below. They have red light and white light, three different stages. So double tap red, single tap white. Um, rechargeable. I used one of these for a two week long trip 
and I hadn't had to recharge the batteries. Only on this tag along that we just finished, I had to recharge one of these, well, actually both of them, because my daughter left one on in the tent all night. I had to recharge both of these once, that is it. So how's that for power consumption? Pretty damn good, I reckon. In terms of solar power and power for my battery, I'm using a solar blanket now. That's an amorphous red arc panel, so it's good in low light, can work in overcast conditions, and two solar panels on the roof. Now, without that blanket, my battery kind of doesn't get enough charge to last overnight. So the battery is something I'm going to change. So for guys who are looking at camping with two fridges, get two batteries. Get 200 and something amp hours of battery power, or at least 150, thereabouts, and uh, you should suffice with two panels. However, one battery, two fridges, I don't recommend it. Just get one bigger fridge, um, and uh, then you, you will have this, you will have half the current draw that what I have. It's quite amazing when you think about it. So if you have a fridge that's 100 litres, the mo it's only one motor running. But if you have two fridges, one 30 litre, 140 litre, that's 70 litres, that's 30 litres less than a 100 litre fridge, you're using twice the power. It's amazing how that works. Before I forget, I usually bring small UHF radios just for kids, so if they go and wander off, I can still get contact with them. Last thing I'm going to talk about is satellite phone. Now, traveling in remote places and camping in remote places, some unfortunate things could happen, like anywhere else. And if they do, well, you kind of don't have any contact with the outside world and you're by yourself. So I'm talking, we're by ourselves, I have a small child with me, should something, you know, bad happen, snake bites, something like that, or, she breaks her leg or something. Um, it's not like if an adult breaks their leg, suck it up, let's drive out of here. A child breaks their leg, well, you kind of would like to get some help there pretty quick. Satellite phone, recommend it. You can even hire them. So just do yourself a favor and get something so you can contact the outside world should something go wrong. It's like an insurance policy, in other words. All right, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, Put them up there i may have left something out but look there will be another one later on of my solo camping this is camping with a small child um, and uh, my camping kind of changes as it progresses as you would have seen from my previous video yeah. um, and look there might be some pointers and tips from the previous video that might interest you as well so there'll be a link to that down here you can subscribe over here and thanks again for watching patreon.com slash ronnie dahl if you feel like supporting the channel. Cheers. See you later. We better pack up, Sienna. Yeah. We got a long drive.